want you guys to stand on your feet and give our kids one more big round of applause. Yeah. I was so impressed when I came here on Friday night and I saw the amount of kids that were here. You guys don't understand because you're, I, we always say in education that you need to come and spend at least one week inside the schoolroom. These kids, believe it or not, the babies on up could have chose to be any place else on Friday night, but you all made sure that our kids were here, and I think that that's a major accomplishment. So I want you to stand to your feet and give the kids another round of applause. an assistant principal at Harold C. Johnson Elementary School in York. Before that, I taught eighth grade South Carolina history at York Middle School. So I've seen children from preschool on up to eighth grade. So I'm just really, really happy to be here today to be your guest speaker. Um, the first thing that I want you guys to do is stand to your feet and let's find our scripture. The scripture today, is, I have a couple because I feel like you have to back what you're saying up by scripture. So, but the first one, our lead scripture for today is Matthew 22, 37 through 40. Matthew 22, 37 to 40. And while you guys are finding the scripture, I pointed out that my little cousins came from Winthrop in Columbia if you guys all know, my mom is Minister McKelvey, and she's here. She's in town this week. She's a jet setter. She's always on the run, um, but she's here this week. And then we have Tori right here. Tori, can you raise, wave your hand? And Ryan is in the back with the boy. <laughs> and Rihanna is right there in front with the big bow. The teachers at my school say the bigger the bow, the closer the guy. All right, so Matthew 22, 37 and 40 says, Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord with, you, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophet. And I'll give you my next um, scripture in a moment. But our topic for today comes from the kids last song that they sung and it sold out for Jesus. Can we pray? Dear yes. right. Lord, we want to thank you for bringing us here today. Thank you for traveling mercy and getting us all here safely. God, we know that when we look at the news, we see that the, the, just a short trip from the church to home or from home to the church could have ended someone's life. So we just want to say thank you, Lord, for bringing us all here safely today. God, we ask that you stop by Cedar Grove and you bless me, the speaker, and the hearers of your, of your word. And God, I, lastly, I ask you that you go into every school house that's represented here and you just touch and bless all of our children. Stop by each classroom door and just bless our kids so that they are getting the best education possible. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, I, um, got a, a text from Minister um, Dickerson, and this year, if you are good friends with me, Pam and Kim and Danielle, y'all know that this year has started off, whew, it started off different. So when she messaged me, I was like, uh, let me not respond to her to the weekend. So I called her that weekend, that Saturday, and she said, um, I need you to speak on the fifth Sunday, and I said, I should have called you on Thursday. That way I could have came up with an excuse. <laughs> but I was like, okay, you know, I, I, I can do this. I speak at, you know, district meetings and things like that across our district. And I go to um, conventions and conferences and I speak. So I was like, okay, I, you know, I, I can do this. I've, I've, I've spoke at church before. So I, I told her, yes, I would do it. She gave me the topic, sold out for Jesus. And the immediate thing that popped inside my brain, gosh, that's a really, really big topic for little people. Um, like, do they really even know what that would mean or where sold out for Jesus would come from? And 
So after a couple of weeks, she gave me about two or three weeks, I guess, to prepare. And as the weeks went on, you know, I just kept thinking, Lord, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? But as I sat in church last Sunday, I don't even know what it was that the pastor said, but the scripture, we are called to become, be a peculiar um, people popped inside my brain. So I just typed it into my phone and I said, let me look up that scripture later on. And then I started looking at it and I started reading it and I was like, that I think to me is a perfect way to explain souls out to Jesus, to the children and to grown up there. So that scripture is 1 Peter 2 and 9. It says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal Hello. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him, him who hath called you out of darkness and into the marvelous light. And I said, that is perfect. That is a perfect way to describe what being sold out for Jesus means to, to young people on Youth Sunday. And so what do I mean by that? I mean that sold out for Jesus doesn't mean that you are perfect. Is Miss Patrice perfect? No. It doesn't mean that you always make the right decision. Do we always make the right decision? But what it does mean is that you have something because you are a royal generation. You are a holy priesthood. So what it does mean is that if you're sold out for Jesus, there should be something different about you. There should be something peculiar about you. So that when you walk inside a building, and you may not make the right, I have kids all the time, that walk inside my office, and they may not have made the right decision, but I know that their heart is in the right place. Because there's just something about them. There's something, and I have to explain that to my teachers, if you're a teacher in here, because sometimes they think, when they come to admin, go to ISS, you should be mean. You should be hard to them. That's the only way they're gonna learn. That's not true. When they come inside my office, and I know that there's something about them, I know that there's something different about them, I know that they are walking in a royal, and they may not even know it yet, because some of them have never stepped foot inside a church. So they may not even know it, they will know, I know that they will know, but they may not even know it yet. You think that, you know what, sometimes, yeah, you go in the ISS, because you shouldn't have touched so-and-so, or you shouldn't have... But before I send you there, I'm going to give you a little bit of love. And I may not be able to pray out loud about you, but I sure can hold my head down and say a little prayer at my desk before I send you on out. And I don't ever have to let them know or the parents know that I said a little prayer over their life, but I can just do it because I know that there is something different. There is something peculiar about them. And I know that we're talking about the youth. But I feel like as I read it and I studied, I was like, this is something that we adults, when you walk inside your job, they should know that there is something that they shouldn't be shocked to hear that you are the youth minister. They shouldn't be shocked to hear that you are the pastor of a church. They shouldn't be shocked to hear that you are a deacon because they, they shouldn't be shocked to know that you come to church every Sunday and you usher because when you walk inside the building, there should be something different about you. There should be something. So it's sold out for Jesus, like I said, was so big. But when you think about it on this scope, it's like, no, it's not. Because it just simply means that your heart is in the right place. It just simply means that I fell down, I said the wrong thing, I maybe shouldn't approach that in that situation, but there is something about me that says, I need to go back to that person, and I need for my ad, I need to humble myself, and I need to apologize to that ad. There should be something different about you. When you make a mistake inside your classroom, when you talk back to your teacher, when you roll your eyes or suck your teeth, because we do that, when you decide that this day is the day that I'm not gonna pay attention, I'm gonna shout out every time she opens her mouth, I'm gonna yell out, I'm gonna blurt out, 
there should be something different in you, something inside your heart that says, you know what, I made a bad mistake. I'm going to apologize to Miss So-and-so when I go back inside her class. I'm going to apologize to that friend that I wronged on the playground that day. I'm going to apologize to that friend that I spread her, her secrets about. Come on. You know, so there should be something different. And so that's what, to me, being sold out for Jesus, my iPad keeps blocking up on me, y'all. That's what I think that being sold out for Jesus should mean to us. So I, I was like, I need to give you three points. So I'm going to give you three points, and I tried to break it down to teenage kid language, grown-up language, so that we can take it back to us, take it back with us throughout the week. So the first point that I came up with is something that I myself am working with. Choose when to respond and not to respond to negativity or things that just do not make sense to you. So that's point number one. Sometimes it's so quick, and for me, it is so quick to just come on out. And I'm not thinking before I speak. So I'll speak for myself, that you're just not thinking. But you need to make the choice that you're gonna think before it comes out of your mouth. Do I really need to say that I don't think this lesson is fun? Do I, does that really need to come out of my mouth? Do I really need to say to my boss that I don't agree with what they're saying? Like, is the, wor is the world going to end if it just doesn't come out of my mouth? Think before I speak. So choose when to respond and when not to respond to things that are negative. And that scripture that I pulled for that one was 1 Peter 3 and 9 that says, Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repeat, hey, evil with blessing. Oh, so you're going to be mean to me? Guess what I'm going to do? I do this. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy you some ice cream the next day. My mama put an extra dollar on my account. Are you going to be ugly to me? Here's the ice. It's so much easier to just repay the evil with good. It's just so much. Oh, you're going to be mean because I got back a five minutes late for lunch. You're going to go and tell everybody I got back. Next time, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring you some lunch back. I'm going to bring you some fries back. I'm going to bring you a frosty fries. You know what I mean? Just choose when it's worth responding to or when it's not worth responding to. It says, because you are called so that you may inherit the blessing. So if you choose to go ahead and just ignore or let that negativity go, what it's saying is that you will be blessed. So sometimes when we come off at the mouth, we're blocking our own blessing. Speaking from experience. Because you're so quick to speak that now I was going to help you, but now I'm not. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> you block your own blessing by feeling like you have to respond to everything that, that is negative. Number two, the second point that I said that I came up with was if you must respond, and I kind of said this in the last one, choose kindness. And I'm not talking about that fake kindness. I'm not talking about that nice, nasty kindness. I'm talking about that I went home and I prayed about it and I talked to Jesus about it kindness. I sought guidance on God, to God and I said, how should I handle it? So I'm not talking about that nice, nasty, fake kindness. I'm talking about the I really have put things with behind me and now I'm going to show you some love and now I'm going to show you some kindness and now I'm going to show I tell my, my teachers and I can only speak from my perspective because this is where I've been for so long that I never leave my building mad or angry with a child and I, ha I, not, I do I have to talk to some grown ups about that sometimes you know you, ca you can't let because they, they're not doing anything except behaving like a child You can't leave a school building. And that's the same thing with sometimes when we are the grown-ups. I, I could speak from when I was a teacher and I had to deal with other teachers. Sometimes you can't leave the building mad at another teacher. They don't have any other perspective. Sometimes their whole life is that classroom. And if one thing goes wrong inside that classroom or they feel like you've messed up one thing inside, they hit the roof. 
because their whole perspective, their whole life. And I have to tell myself sometimes that I have bigger, I have three kids that need me. You know, I have bigger things going on. So you can't necessarily be mad at them because of the way that they responded to something when that really and truly is their hope. That job may really and truly be their whole life. So just brush that negativity, um, that negativity off. All right, and then the last thing that I said, my third thing, is that their thing is, oh, I'm sorry, and the scripture for that one was Proverbs 25, 21, and 23. It says, if thy enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. If he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heat coals of fire on his head. I'm telling you to burn. You don't even have to say a word. Because they'll say, why are you being so nice? I had people say, I don't understand how you come back the next day and smile because they're not acting like anything except children. That's it, that's all they're acting like. But it will heap hot coals on their head. And the Lord shall, guess what? Reward thee. So that's number two that says, if you just ignore the negativity, guess who gets the blessing? You. For the north wind driveth away the rain, so doeth an ang angry continents and backbiting tongue. All right, the third one says, the third point that I wanted to make was, after you responded with kindness, even if they won't let it go, you let it go. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you've chosen not to respond to it. They keep coming back to you with more mess. They keep coming back to you with more mess on the playground, in the bathroom, or whatever. You let it go. And I think this is my, one of my favorite stories from my childhood, is that over the summer of my seventh grade year, going into my eighth grade year, my mom let me get my private line. Y'all, grown-ups, y'all remember when you got your pri a private line. And my best friend, who I thought was my best friend, gave my private line phone number to some girls that did not like me. So the entire summer, they called my phone with mess and called my phone with mess. And my brother is two years above me, and he said, well, you know, I can't fight them for you because I'm a boy and they're a girl, but, like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And my, my, my mom was like, you know, I, you know, throughout the summer, she was like, I, I don't know. I don't even know why she gave out the number. I'm going to find their parents and da, da, da. And then all of a sudden, I feel like it just clicked in her, her mind when it got back ready for, like, open house. She said, you're going to see them at the lockers. You're gonna see them in the restroom. You can't beat all of them. Cause I, was, I had two big brothers, so I thought I was tough. Yeah, you can, <laughs> I did, I thought I was big and bad. She was like, and you cannot, so you know what you need to do? She said, you're a little, I can't remember the quite, quite the right word that she said, but she would say stuff like, you're a little godly girl, you're a little church girl, you're a little this, that, whatever. She said, when you meet them at the locker, say good morning. When you see them inside the restroom, say, how are you doing? When you see them inside the lunchroom, because teachers at that time didn't go with kids to lunch. When you see them inside the lunchroom, ask them, can you help them with something? She said, and you guys know this phrase, kill them with kindness. It's right. too many of them and one of you. Kill them with kindness. And you know, because we still battle with this as grown up. Sometimes your pride says, I'll be darned if I'm gonna kill them with kindness. <laughs> I'd rather get beat up at the locker than say good morning to, the, you know, your pride sometimes gets inside your way. And she was like, no, she just kept preaching, kept preaching, kept preaching. The rest of that summer, kept preaching, kept preaching, kept preaching. And I was like, if I go inside this building to show out, she's gonna be so disappointed. So it's part of the mommy thing. If I go inside this building, God is going to be, and show out, God is going to be disappointed. Because I, I, I listened to this Travis Green um, song, and at the end of it, it says, I still believe what my eyes can't see. I swear, y'all, I believe in God. Like, I mean, I believe in, into like the 10th degree. So I didn't want to disappoint God, you know? So I was like, I'm going to disappoint my mama. I'm going to disappoint God. Here I go inside this building. She dropped me off because I refused to ride the bus. She dropped me off. I was a little bit bougie. I didn't like riding the bus. So she dropped me off, and the first one came, you think you so muchy much. I said, good morning to you too. 
how was your summer? And I, and I did it in a nice, like, I let it go. I let the phone calls from the summer go. Like, and she said, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Because I thought that it was going to be something. I said, I don't have anything against you. How you doing? We got some of the same family members. How was your summer? How's your mom doing? Like how, and I'm telling you, kill, that killing with kindness made, the whole, made a major difference for my eighth grade year. A year that I thought was going to turn out to be crazy ended up being probably one of the best years that I had. And I, it was because I made the decision. I didn't want to disappoint my mom. I didn't want to disappoint God, so what did I need to do? I needed to let go of that pride, because that pride was saying, get beat up at the locker. <laughs> I had to let go of that pride, and I had to say, you know what? What's the best thing to do? The best thing to do is to kill him with kindness, to let that thing, to let it go. So that was my third point. Just kill, the, kill, kill whatever it is with kindness. And sometimes... It is, I think that, and I say this to children, I feel like we adults forget that children are people too. And that they have little personalities and they have little feelings and their little personalities and their little feelings get hurt. And if you come at a child the wrong way, you can lose them. If you come out at a child in an ugly way, you can really and truly lose them and not be able to reach them for the entire year or, ne or, not, or have to work if you're a mom, dad, auntie, whatever, to gain back that trust because they are little people and these things, it's that hurt, it sticks with them because just like when you hurt and you remember that somebody hurt you, they hurt and they remember that someone hurt them. So you can't, like I'll use from the kids, from the teacher perspective, you cannot go back and still be angry or mad at a child because they're not doing anything but being children and it's all about how we reach them we can't lose them at kindergarten right. so it's, we have to remember that they are people too and they have to remember that we are people too and that the same three points that I just gave they also have to apply if it's not worth responding don't respond if somebody is ugly to you and they're older than you, be kind, be nice. If it's another kid on the playground, be kind, be nice. And if you truly let it go, then really let it go. Don't keep picking it, picking it back up. All right, <clears throat> so I said that I, I always leave my meeting with like a task or with a challenge. So my task or my challenge for my kids today and for my grown-ups today is to be the change that you want to see. As I said earlier, there should be something different about the way that you walk. There should be different about something different about the way that you talk. There should be something different about the way that you approach people. When you walk inside a building, and I try, I, I tell one of my sorrows, I said, you know what I say every morning before I walk inside my school building? That I am the sunshine. I, I am it. I am, and when I walk, if you know me and you know me well, when I walk, I walk like I am. I, am. I walk like I own it. I walk like, <laughs> I walk and I talk a blessed individual and that's because from a young age I was told I was taught that I should be a peculiar people that even though something sly may come out of my mouth people should be able to know that that's not really what's inside my heart and then I should have the, the wherewithal to put that pride aside and apologize for the slick comment that came out of my mouth too so I, I'm tasking you to go out and be the change that you want to see to go out and be that peculiar people if you say that you're a Christian, if you say that you're walking in love, then every place that we see you, from Walmart and how you're dealing with the cashier, from the library and how you're dealing with the people when you check back inside the books, from the bus and as you load the bus inside the morning, because y'all show out on the bus, from the bus and as you load the bus in the morning, 
there should be something peculiar. There should be something different. There should be, you should be walking like you are what? Royalty. You should be walking like you're what? Holy. They should know that even though you fell down, you have the propensity to get back up and turn that thing around. So I leave you guys today with charging you to be a peculiar people, to be the change that you want to see. Thank you.